Welcome to I Finally Get It. This week, we welcome Mary Beth Daigle of Daigle Design. In studio with me, as always, Dustin Webb, our producer. I'm your host, Jeff Martin. Let's get it. So I studied graphic design in school, and then I worked for the university, and I worked for an advertising agency, and then I worked for a publishing house. So each time I would leave one job and move on to the next, I would maintain the relationship with the previous employer as a freelancer. Yeah. Just because I guess it's just how it worked out. They would either offer it or I would mention it and they would be on board with it. So by the time I got to third job, I was really busy. I was working on weekends and nights and I was feeling overworked, but I didn't want to lose those relationships. And I loved, of course, the income. At some point, I just decided to make the move from the third employer to freelance and They were on board with me being a freelancer, so it just worked out that that's how I started my um, company. So I think the aha moment was when I was working so much that I just said, couldn't I just do this for, you know, move on and get the third the third employer to actually be my client too. Correct. So that's how I did it. (laughs) So you are a self-employed freelance graphic designer. Mm -hmm. You know, there's so many people out there that really need to hear about your, your journey. Because, uh, you know, let's say they're at at a job, they're not sure if they love it or they like it, but they maybe they don't want to be tied down to one employer. So you you have gone from employer employee maintaining these relationships and then to the point where you say, I can't have a steady job. I like the freedom of being a freelance graphic designer and I love it. So how how do you get business today outside of those relationships? So. Uh, those three companies that I worked with for, because this is several years later, they one of them's dissolved. The, the person retired and doesn't have his advertising agency anymore. The university does not outsource as much work. Mm-hmm. I have, in fact, they used to outsource to me regularly, but they really won't give me anything else to go ask them for it because yeah. they just don't outsource like they used to. And the publishing house had new new management come on so they had their own team they wanted to change things up and do things differently and but if i reach out to them you know they will consider me for projects but so over the years what i did was referrals a lot of referrals when i worked for the university i worked with so many different departments that they would be like oh so and so's a lawyer like i did work for the law school well oh so and so law firm needs a um, logo or you know this nonprofit uh, legal um, organization really needs somebody to come in and help them with their branding. And so I got a lot of stuff like that, like the alumni that were associated with different schools, you know, they would be looking for, they would see the magazines or the newsletters or, or the publications and they would say, ask, or they'd see my name, or I guess, and they would ask, contact me, but, yeah, yeah. um, but, um, talent agencies also are a good way in Austin. Um, of course you ha- you don't get it, make as, much money when you have a talent agency because they take a, a big cut of it as well. But it's a good way to to get into different industries because sometimes you get nailed into, you'll get Correct. stuck in one industry if you are doing a certain type of work. So it's a good way to get into different industries is reaching out to talent agencies. I was mostly living and working in Austin. I've been back here for about three years now. But in Austin, there are a lot of talent agencies. But um, also just looking on uh, Glassdoor, you know, there's a okay. lot of, projects you can reach out to people and get on board with there but i would say referrals are probably the biggest um biggest thing so i'm always grateful for those referrals yeah (laughs) absolutely yeah i I like sending your work because you're you're so good and you know i don't look bad when i refer you out to somebody else oh thank you you but i'm but i'm sure that's the way you treat all your clients and so the referral business Looking at, um, what is it, Glassdoor? Glassdoor.com. Just those okay. kinds of websites, you know, that just they'll have people looking for contractors or mm. freelancers. Sometimes I'll do contract work, you know, so yeah, uh, yeah. get on with a, a corporation, you know, or a big company or, or a small company and for a duration of time, you know, it just kind of depends on how things are going. But yeah, so over the years, I did. So when I very first started, I had about maybe 10 years of working for those three companies at different uh, levels and then after well maybe not quite 10 years maybe more like 6 or 7 but so after a number of years of working fo- solely for them then that's, you know things started changing up and I started reaching out for t- to talent agencies yeah, and got it, got it. looking for referrals and that kind of thing so, so how'd you get into graphic design in the first place were you always artistic you know I love drawing when I was a little kid I would draw my 
dog and yeah. I would take little painting classes. And I, just, I loved art projects. The way I got into it, I guess I was in school. I, f- I wanted to study journalism to start. And then I think I was just inspired by someone I met who was talented. And I thought, oh, I would like to just that looks like fun. Yeah. So I just wanted to do something that I thought looked like fun because in my mind, when I, you know, I wasn't even thinking about the future, you know, yeah, can yeah, I exactly. pay my bills doing this? I just thought I want to draw and I want to paint. And so um, they were, she was a graphic designer. So that's studied the graphic design. I didn't go into an art major. I just studied graphic design. And got uh, it. Got so it, that's got what it, got I was inspired by somebody else's path. Just the, the the fun that looks she looked like she was having doing things she was doing. <laughs> that's that's amazing. So and, and the beautiful thing about your situation is you lived in Austin for many years. You're able to come back here and and help family members, so you can work remotely. I mean, yeah. you you have the best thing going. Freelance, yes. you can work as much as you want or as little as you want, and you can work remotely and send the product digitally. Yes, I love that. That is one of the best things about being an independent person is that yeah. you can take off time from work. I took off one time a whole month to go um, camping in uh, New Zealand in a camper van. And, you know, you can't do that when you're working for another employer, for someone else. I mean, you could after a certain number yeah. of years accruing vacation time, maybe you wouldn't take a vacation yep. for a couple of years and you finally get to take one. And yeah, I love that. I love the, that you can, you know, just up and go and, and uh, go, you know, you can work from anywhere. You really, you, you can work from anywhere mm-hmm. in the world. I can. Have you done, so when you were in New Zealand, yeah. were you actually working a little bit or did you just say, I'm checking out? No, I checked out, took that whole month off, but I ha- do have, I know people, colleagues, work colleagues, like work people that I work with, a web programmer, for example, who does just that. He travels all, he'll go to a yoga retreat and he'll be working in the mornings and doing the yoga in the afternoon, that kind of thing. Yeah, so that, that's pretty it nice. It is inspirational. I have to say, I'd like to try that maybe one day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So what would you tell somebody who is in a job and they know that they can do something, they're extremely talented in freelance work, what would you tell them to do? Reach out to the kinds of companies that you would want to work for, like stay in your current job, but um, on the side, like on the weekends, you know, make it a make it a side gig and then build it up in the side, like build it up on the side. So, yeah, all right. So, um, uh, that's oh. a light bulb moment, right? Oh. oh, I get it. I finally get it. Here at Company Growth Academy, we've begun teaching 20 minute growth strategies. They're free, they're fast, and they're full of information to help you grow your company. For more information and to sign up for our advanced notification list, just go to 20togrow.com, 20togrow.com. Let's get it. I love that because too many people are afraid to uh, go out and, and they think they have to go 100% all or nothing, right? Mm-hmm. But, you, but you can. Today, you can have, and of course, they call it side hustle, right? <laughs> you can have a side hustle mm-hmm. and you can build that and hopefully one day wean off of your job and on to a freelance career. Yeah. That's incredible. That's how I did it. I would just keep on my relationships with the previous employers of course if you wanted to do something super artistic like a mural or something you could always just reach out to different businesses you know build up your skills and on the side and reach out and, you know those kinds of things on the side more so, so what kind of stuff do you do because i i've we've done graphics and whatnot but what is your your main thing your skill set if there uh, is one creative conceptualization so i let the cr- design process and really I consider myself a multidisciplinary graphic designer. I have a, a wide skill set. I do print and digital design. So, but I would say mainly marketing campaigns and collateral. Sometimes there's always already existing brand standards, like when I work for a company and just maybe they just want a presentation. So I come in and, you know, using their existing brand standards, um, work within their brand standards to create something creative. Yeah. Um, so I work within brand standards and I also can. Um, develop brand standards. Working creatively within brand standards is a big thing. I, th- I guess I'm considered kind of a corporate graphic designer as far as the type, what I've mostly done, because I've done a lot of different things, but I've worked with nonprofits, small companies, but I've done a lot of work for uh, mega corporations mm-hmm. and uh, that kind of thing, like uh, Keller Williams Realty and Advanced Micro Devices. And, but really, all kinds of graphic design. I've just done it yeah, all. I want to ask you about brand standards. Yes. At, at what stage should a company develop their own brand standards? It, it, you kind of, when you have to up your game and you want the look and feel to remain the same, 
What stage of business should they do that at the very beginning or after they get a little established or what? I think if you're trying to uh, market yourself, you definitely want to create some brand standards, you know, at least <laughs> at least the very minimum you want to have like a, a logo and some fonts, you know, some colors. Colors. And, um, yeah. and then, you know, depending on what you need, like sometimes the company will start with a website. They'll really need their website. So sometimes they'll hire someone to design a website. They'll have their existing logo and and they'll then from there they'll start getting you know, developing their, have that company start developing some brand standards if they're not already already in place. But yeah, sure. I would say that up front, you know, it would be really good to make it part of your, whatever first big project you have, you know, developing your website and yeah. um, your, along with your logo. And yeah, I feel like everybody, when they, when they conceive a company or a business and they get a logo, that's it. That's that's the business. Now we're now we can open. I got an LLC and I have a logo. There's a lot more to it though, that, you know, because let's say your logo is red, yellow, and blue. You know, everything is going to be red, yellow, and blue. But somebody like you could really professionalize that and, and ensure that things have the right look and yeah. feel, right? Yeah. Well, you'll have want to have. So a lot of what will happen a lot of times is that a company will have their logo and they'll have their logo colors, like their primary palette. Yeah. So the graphic designer will come on board and, you know, you can hire someone to develop um, your brand standards would be to create a secondary palette. So mm. your secondary palette, you know, would be colors that would complement you know, that like if I was at Enterprise, for example, the other day, everything is green and black. Green and black. That's so right. So some companies are really strong that way. It's just some companies have a secondary palette. And I'm sure, actually, I'm sure at Enterprise, if you went and looked up their brand standards, they would have a secondary palette because they have brochures and things like that. It's not going to all just be, there's probably some grays. Yeah, exactly. Some neutral colors and some, you know, or something to catch your attention with like a red or, you know, something like that. But yeah. But yeah. <laughs> so what's next for you and, and your, your business? Well, I've got a new, really new interesting project coming up i'm creating some uh shock and awe box <laughs> oh yeah 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 with you yeah yeah i cannot wait <laughs> yeah. to get started i'm excited about that project and it's corporate and it's marketing and mm -hmm. yeah the shock and awe and uh, so if if people don't know what we're talking about basically uh when you engage with a prospect you want to ship them out something and you want to shock and awe them <laughs> with all the information about your company and so you're you're gonna rock that project oh it's shock and awe shock and awe i thought you said like, shock and awe and i was hmm i'm gonna have to google that no 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 we're putting together a shock and awe box you want to awe them okay well that's yeah, so, and, and I, you can do it better than okay, anybody okay <laughs> <laughs> I love that challenge. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no doubt about it. No doubt about it. So if you could name any one part of your your occupation, what mm -hmm. what is your favorite thing that you, you just, this is what I do best or I love the most? Talking to the client, figuring out what their, what their needs are, figuring out what their problem is or, if, you know, and def helping them figure out the solution to it and uh, yeah. going through the creative process and rendering, going through the rendering process and uh, presentation process and getting the feedback and incorporating the feedback and coming up with the final perfected design. You know, yeah. I love all the processes, but I'd have to say my favorite part is the upfront part, which I, the, well, the very upfront part is the discovery and you know, talking to the client, but the idea part, which yeah, is coming up yeah, with sure. ideas when you get to pull, pull out your little, your little light bulb over your head <laughs> That's right. and come up with the ideas. I think that's the most fun. Many people may not know you are the artist that designed, uh, I finally get it's uh, podcast deal. cover. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That was fun. Yeah, that was fun. And yeah. just another example of how you work. And, yeah. <laughs> Cause I didn't know what I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad to assist. Most people, when they leave a job, they're, they're upset or they want to go do something totally different. You actually left three jobs and, and continue to do graphic design mm -hmm. only to become a freelancer. So you had to have loved what you the the career choice that you've made. Mm -hmm. So what is what is about it that you love it just so much? Well, I think early on, uh, the American Institute of Graphic Artists organization played a big role in my just loving my work because I was part of that organization is that they they bring in speakers and there's all kinds of events, creative events. So you're net, constantly networking. And, and that's how it, sometimes I hear about the next opportunity. And I would think, hmm, I, you know, I'm doing working for 
this company now doing this kind of work, but I do a little bit of that, but I would really like to go check out this job. And I loved graphic design kind of as a... Um, as a community and as a, I guess that was a way of living when I was, you know, I guess it is now too, but I'm not really involved with the AIJ here in Louisiana yet, but yeah. I've just been so busy, but with a, with family and, and, you know, and continuing my business. But when I was living in Austin, I was involved with the AIGA and I just loved that. I think that just gave me such a passion, just seeing what, how other people, cause it's, you keep, you're basically, it's a camaraderie amongst, um, professionals. And so you're inspired by them and they alert, you know, you're, you see where to find inspiration, you know, the books, the yep. website, websites, the events, but just hearing those speakers, you know, the, you know, the, the really, you know, amazing, uh, speakers, you know, just from yeah, all yeah. over the place. And, I guess it was just a way of life. I just loved creativity. I loved that I could do something creative for a living. I just liked being able to pull out my little notepad and sketch up ideas and present them and have some see someone get excited about it. Like, oh, yeah, well, that's yeah. a great idea. Or what if we did it like this? I just love that part, the creative collaboration aspect. Yep. I love uh, the teamwork. Like when I would work for all these different places, the people I worked with, the so if there's another designer or art directors, I love the camaraderie of like sh sharing ideas and it just it kind of just was fun you know I just I thought it was a I've always loved that fun of course when you work for yourself you I'm still having that camaraderie when I'm working for different organizations well sometimes I'm not but sometimes when I'm working with a company they have their own internal marketing team so I'm working with yeah, their sure. art directors their videographers their web developers I, I gotta tell you yeah. what I heard oh. from that is community and you got engaged and involved in the, what is it, the AIG? The, the AIGA, the American Institute of Graphic Artists. Okay. Yes. It's so important for people to hear that, look, I am in an industry and you can either be, you know, kind of plod through it and just be part, or you can get engaged and be part of a community. And that's really what inspired you so much. I love hearing that. Working with your clients, and I've been able to meet you, and you're just such a lovely person. But how do you try to leave people different and better than before they ever met you? I try to be a good listener and hear what the client has to say and make sure that there's a clear understanding of what the client needs are so that um, – I can deliver what they're expecting or maybe even beyond what they're expecting. My goal is to really, you know, impress. So yeah, I try to go, <laughs> but I would say uh, how I leave them better is like, I leave them with what they're, they need, you know, I leave them with a, with a solution to their creative problems. And so yeah, um, something that will work, something that will help them define their business, communicate their um, brand, define, communicate, enrich their brands. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> that needs to be your, your tagline. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. Thanks for tuning in to I Finally Get It. For more information on Mary Beth and what she's got going on, visit our show notes. And don't forget to like and subscribe so you never miss an episode. Hey, at Company Growth Academy, we've started doing 20-minute trainings. These are 20-minute growth strategies. If you want to sign up to be on the advanced notification list, just go to 20togrow.com, 20togrow.com. If you have a light bulb moment, if you're a business owner and you have a light bulb moment that would help other business owners, please reach out to me at jeff at ifinallygetit.com.